All right, welcome to Dental Boards Review. This is a dental implantology review series number two. So if you haven't watched uh, review series number one, make sure you watch number one because uh, this is a series of questions with uh, explanations, okay? We're reviewing the principles of implantology for NBDE exam, all right? All right. So, review question number 11. Locators are the lowest profile attachment requiring only dash of vertical height. So, how many millimeters of vertical height do you need for the locator attachment? How much does it need? Okay. So, you have to know these numbers. All right. So, sorry. Let us go back here. So, our answer here is c okay so locators locators are the lowest profile okay attachment requiring only six millimeters of vertical height now if you are looking at uh, the 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 fixed uh, uh fixed uh danger with a bar then you are looking at 15 millimeters okay if there is a bar so the the bar height requires at least about 15 millimeters of inter arch distance for you to create that uh, denture with the bar however for locators you only need six millimeters of vertical height okay so get that principle in mind this is very important okay question number 12 Implants placed in which location have the highest success compared to other locations? All right. This question uh, comes up over and over in terms of principles. Okay. So A, uh, posterior mandible. B, anterior mandible. C, anterior maxilla. Or D, posterior maxilla okay so for success high success rate maxilla has um, a poor bone okay so this one here if it's maxilla we, we cancel so we are left with mandibles okay because the mandible has strong bone so which one has uh, more more uh, cortical bone uh, the posterior mandible and anterior mandible right so if you said anterior mandible you are correct okay so anterior mandible has the highest success compared to other location okay because you have a lot of bone over there in the anterior mandible that's why when the patient loses some some height you can put some four to five implants in the anterior mandible okay uh, for the for the uh, denture all right so this review series is the this we discuss the the things you need to know for your exam okay there are different ways of uh, about implants but these are the principles of implants that you need to know the basic principles that you need to know for your exam all right question 13 what is the allowable bone loss after first year of implant placement? Okay, this one. So this one, if you are about to put an implant, uh, the patient can can ask you. Okay, uh, is this a, is is this implant uh, permanent, and am I going to lose some bone around it? So you, sh you should be able to answer uh, how how much uh, bone loss they are going to get. Okay, so the allowable bone loss the first year is 0 0.1 to 2 millimeters okay and so let's look at the so for the for the allowable bone loss okay the, so there's always a marginal bone loss over time okay so so this is the, what you can tell the patient you're going to lose some bone over time okay but the amount of bone that you lose is constant and very minimal okay so there's always the marginal 
bonus over time and after the first year okay after the first year of placing an implant is about point nine millimeters okay with with the average of 0 0.1 millimeter thereafter all right so the first year there's about 0 0.9 millimeters okay of bone loss and then after that each year you lose about 0 0.1 millimeter which is very little okay all right and this is in a patient who has good oral hygiene they have um yeah, they are healthy okay they don't smoke this is in a healthy individuals okay question 14 who first observed the phenomena of osteointegration uh, very very historic uh, historic um, uh, question here that you're supposed to know when if you are dealing with implants okay so is this a uh, benedict osseous is it a PI uh, Brandmark, Nobel Prize, Albert Einstein? Okay, so our answer here is B. Okay, uh, Brandmark is the one who uh, discovered the phenomenon of osteointegration. Okay, all right. Question 15 A cantilever distance should be, so you should know about cantilever distances in uh, implants. Okay. So cantilever distance should be how many times the length of the anterior posterior spread, okay? So is it uh, one times the length of the anterior posterior spread? Is it two times, three times, or four times? So the cantilever distance, okay, of, uh, of uh, the prosthesis should be two times the anterior posterior distance, okay? So our answer here is B. So you, should, you need to know the principles of uh, cantilever and uh, the anterior posterior spread for uh, for implants. Okay. If uh, you need to uh, clarification, please uh, comment or mess, uh, email me. All right. So here is uh, the clarification here or the feedback that I have for you. So the anterior and posterior spread. Or the it's called the AP spread okay is the distance between the most anterior fixture or implants and the posterior fulcrum implants okay and this is on edentulous ridge okay so if we have an arch like this this is the mandible okay so the most anterior implant if it's here at the most posterior implant if it's here okay so you're going to put implants okay here and here and maybe you put you know another one there and another one here okay so on the on the on the left hand side left right on the left hand side so you know you're going to put implants here but the denture is going to be retained and it has to cover the molars too so your denture is going to to cover all this side okay so the anterior posterior spread is this distance from this implant to this implant okay and the cantilever is the distance from here Okay, to here. So the cantilever distance has to be two times. Okay, two times or less than the this implant's uh, distance. Okay, uh, the anterior posterior spread where the implants are. The distance between those two uh, two implants, the anterior and the posterior. So where the cantilever is, so the, the length of the denture has to be two times or less than the distance between the two implants. Okay, that's what it means. Uh, so, and we're going to show, to see the picture towards the end of this series. Okay, 
and um, usually this will be determined will determine the acceptance maximum distance of the posterior prosthesis cantilever okay and the and this is usually two times or less okay so if in your exam you don't see two times you can see 1.5 times okay all right so make sure you, you memorize this okay all right question 16 which implants are referred to as staple implants so uh, staple implants is it uh, the superior implants trans osteo implant endosteo frame or endosteo root form okay so staple implants are considered the trans osteo implants trans osteo implants are considered a staple implants Okay. Uh, if you haven't seen the transosseal implants or staple implant, you can always Google and see uh, how they look like. All right. All right. So transosseal implants actually pass; they pass through the mandible. Okay. And for obvious reason, they are restricted to the mandible. Okay, because they are passing through. In the maxilla, you can't pass through the entire skull because the, the remember the maxilla is connected to the to the to the cranial base. So. You can't you can't you can't uh, uh, put a through and through uh, implants there. So these transosteal implants were mostly restricted to the mandible. Okay. So the way the transosteal implants, you have the your mandible there, and they put an implant, but it's going through the mani the mandible. Okay. So you can there's there's one going through and through through the mandible and. Uh, and then there's like a bar coming up where the, the, the denture was attached, okay? So the, the objective was to achieve bicortical. So whenever you see trans implants, think mandible and think about bicortical stabilization, engaging both cortex of the, of the mandible, okay? And this may also be referred to as staple implants, okay? So high yield that uh, you're supposed to know all right so question number 17 what is the quality of bone in the maxilla so you know the maxilla and the money ball uh, the thickness of bone is different okay so is it in the maxilla is it more cortical than trabecular more trabecular than cancellous or more trabecular than cortical more dense than the mandible so this is out we know this is wrong more trabecular than cortical and more trabecular than cancerous so this is pretty much saying the same thing there's no difference there and uh, more cortical than the trabecular so that's wrong so what's left c okay all right so it, as long as you know the anatomy, okay, you can always uh, uh, weed through. So the, the questions can be uh, confusing in terms of uh, 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 terminologies, okay? All right, so coming up next is the uh, Dental Implantology Review Series number three. Make sure you subscribe so you can receive notification for the new uh, uh, lectures, all right?